Long before the modern Japan we know today, the ninja worked secretly in the shadows for hundreds of years. Public records about the ninja are scarce. Ninja Truth. The Kunoichi, the female ninja. The Kunoichi is often portrayed in popular culture as a nimble and skilled warrior. Yet this image is said to be a modern conception. So what is the truth behind the Kunoichi? Leading ninja researcher, Professor Yuji Yamada presented us with a new point of view. Some people believe that the Kunoichi performed the same tasks as male ninja while others believe they're pure fiction. It's a matter of contention. And, as of now, we don't have a clear answer. However, the Bansen Shukai, one of the most well-known ninja manuals, describes the kunoichi no jutsu that was performed by women. It says, send the kunoichi into places that men cannot enter. In the time of the ninja, upper-class residences often had quarters called okugoten, reserved solely for women, which men were strictly forbidden from entering. According to the Bansen Shukai, a mission was considered successful if the kunoichi was able to secure a position and connect with the lady of the house. Oko. あさっての晩遅くに来客がある。簡単な食事とお酒を用意なさい。夜更けに来客ですか珍しい。一体どんな方がいらっしゃるんで前にも来た目つきの鋭い侍じゃ。どうも好きになれ。あなたは余計な
Let's see how a kunoichi posing as a handmaid would have used it. Yoshitore! Using Kakuramino no Jutsu, an undercover Kunuichi would purchase goods and sneak a ninja into the estate using a false bottom chest. When the situation warranted, the Kunuichi appeared to have worked closely with their fellow ninja. By imprinting a strong piece of information at the start, you can affect subsequent decisions. This is called anchoring. By impressing on the guard the value of the kimono, the kunoichi prevents him from digging deeper. There are no known records of kunoichi engaged in battle. Yet an illustration from the Edo period depicts a woman wielding a sickle and chain. Hairpins and kimono cords were just some of the items worn by women that the kunoichi could convert into weapons. So, were to have belonged to the house of Takeda Shingen, a 16th century feudal lord known for employing a ninja network. And a female name is included in the list of successors. It's a Takeda ninja manuscript, and it contains the female name, Umemura Sawano. From this, we can assume that women were taught ninja skills to some extent. Located in the heart of the Japanese mainland, Nagano Prefecture is surrounded by mountains. In its eastern region is Netsu, Tomi City. A mountain village here has a rich history, and legend has it that it was home to a female group likely associated with the ninja. We're on our way to meet a researcher who for many years has been studying this mysterious female group. Mr. Yoshikazu Ishikawa is a specialist on local history. So what was this area known for? This area used to be called Netsu Village. 
It was home to a group of females known as Aruki Miko. The Aruki Miko would travel across the country, administer to the people, and offer prayers for those in need. People also sought their counsel on different matters. The literal translation of Aruki Miko is Wandering Shrine Maiden. The Aruki Miko are said to have made their living by serving as mediums and communicating with the dead. Until modern times, Japan was divided into numerous territories and travel was not easily permitted. Yet, the Aruki Miko were granted special permits that allowed them to move about freely and they held a unique position in society. They went everywhere, so they were perfectly able to collect information. It's not a stretch of the imagination to assume that they were involved in espionage. In fact, some believe that the Aruki Miko were actually a group of Kunoichi. In the 16th century, the powerful warlord Takeda Shingen controlled a large and important territory that covered much of present-day Yamanashi Prefecture and Shizuoka Prefecture. And he is said to have issued this document, which orders the construction of an Aruki Miko training school at Netsu. This led to speculation that the Aruki Miko were Kunoichi. Do you think that the Arukimiko are Takeda Shingen's Kunoichi? That's one theory, and it does make sense. However, the authenticity of that document has been called into question. I see. So, what is the truth about the Arukimiko? Recently, a new clue to the mystery was discovered at the residence of a woman who served as their leader. And here it is. It's an interesting document describing physical characteristics such as a thin face with slightly irregular features and a crooked middle finger on the left hand. Could it be a secret message indicating their targets? You ask why a description like that was found in a Miko's home. It certainly suggests that the Aruki Miko were involved in some sort of intelligence work, at least on occasion. It's the most likely explanation. Led by Mr. Ishikawa, we were shown to a burial ground, the graves of the Aruki Miko. But were they really what they claimed to be, or were they Kunoichi? I guess they took their secret with them to the grave, hey? But thanks to researchers like Mr. Ishikawa, the truth may soon be unveiled. We're left with hints and traces of the Kunoichi, yet none can be considered conclusive evidence. So, did the Kunoichi play a role behind the scenes of history, or are they simply the product of a creative imagination? In true ninja form, the truth remains elusive, yet we're possibly one step closer to the ninja truth. <laughs>